For our 4th of July special, we have to bring you an update on that one-time American favourite that found out the hard way that go woke, go broke isn't just a cute saying. Bud Light is still facing a consumer backlash and boycott after using trans activist Dylan Mulvaney as an ambassador and now they are under attack from Dylan Mulvaney. I took a brand deal with a company that I loved and I posted a sponsored video to my page for a company to hire a trans person and then not publicly stand by them is worse in my opinion than not hiring a trans person at all because it gives customers permission to be as transphobic and hateful as they want. So after costing Bud Light 27 billion in market value, Dylan Mulvaney is still attacking the company as, well, help decimate. Joining me now is comedian Alex Stein. Alex, 4th of July weekend would normally be one where Bud Light will be just be running off the shelves, but it seems like it's a lost cause these days. Well, you know, now in some grocery stores, Bud Light is actually cheaper than water, Rita, which is unbelievable. But let me tell you what the problem is with this. Is, <laughs> and I love, I love that we're sticking it to Bud Light and that their you know company is down twenty billion dollars. But sadly, Anheuser Busch, they're not the ones that suffer from this. Who suffers from this are the distributors, the people that actually stock the shelves. You know, all the people that actually work for the infrastructure of Bud Light that are getting laid off. That's what stinks in this situation, Rita. It's not even necessarily about Dylan Mulvaney. It's not even about their weird agenda. It just kind of sucks that even when you stick it to the man, Rita, it still doesn't even necessarily work mm. because they're not going to really go out of business. But I think it's important because it sends a message to other brands. It sends a message to the corporate world that there can be a cost with this sort of activism. It is not a cost-free exercise. And talking about Dylan Mulvaney, let's look at one of his recent videos that went viral, which I think has inspired you. I live for the gays. I live for them. I live for the gays. The gays, the gays, the gays. The guys, the gays, the gays make me happy. I don't want to live for anyone else. Gay, gay, gay. Be, be gay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I love transgenders. I love transgenders. Ah, I love them. Thank you. It's primetime sign on Instagram. Oh, and the city is run like <sighs> Alex, that was you at New York City Hall. Uh, what message were you trying to convey there? Well, you know, Pride Month was absolutely insane here in America, and every single corporation had the uh, rainbow flag. But in New York, it was so absurd. I was there for a New York Young Republicans event, and I'm telling you, it was, and I'm not homophobic or transphobic, but it was extra devious this year. A lot of, you know, basically partial nudity around children. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to take it out of the Full street and frontal nudity. Put it in the city hall. Yeah, I'm saying all kinds of nudity. I mean, there there's a situation of full frontal nudity in Washington. But my point is, I wanted to try to take what was happening in the, the Pride Parade into the City Hall. And if you could see in the video, they felt very uncomfortable because these are adult topics that you wouldn't talk at a workplace. Rita, you wouldn't have a sexual conversation with one of your producers at Sky News, just like you shouldn't have a sexual conversation with a child outside of a Pride Parade. Well, yes, or expose your bits to them. And so we've played footage here of all sorts of, uh, well, I don't know, degeneracy, but full frontal nudity at what were labelled family-friendly events. Uh, that's just, yeah, there's no wonder there's been a backlash to that sort of behaviour.